Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And I couldn't resist this for very long. This is the new Fistema Fell. I, I managed a day or two, um, but I want to have a go at this. So it's going to appear in tonight's video, hopefully, if I can solve it. Um, it's called Even Knights Fear Arrows. And some of the comments on Logic Masters Germany from people who've already solved it are quite amusing. My favourite was the simplicity of the solve path and yet how difficult it is to get to is just mind-blowingly beautiful. So um, yeah, I think this could be a very, very cool puzzle indeed. Um, now before I read the rules, just something to mention. Um, we have released some Christmas related merchandise. Yes, I know it's only November and no, I don't really agree with doing uh, Christmas adverts in November either um, but our merch is not quite the same as mince pies it has to be created it has to be shipped so if anybody does want anything by Christmas it might be best not to wait too long um, now with that let's get on with the rules of Fistema Fell's new puzzle what we have got is normal Sudoku rules apply uh, cells separated by a knight's move cannot contain the same digit okay uh, the number in a circle indicates the sum of the digits along each arrow originating from the circle. Digits may not, may repeat, digits may repeat along an arrow, that's important to know. Uh, a cell with a blue square can only contain an even digit. Okay, so let's just run through what those rules mean in case you've not seen them before. If Imagine this square in the middle was a 1, now that would mean you could not have a 1 in any of these cells because all of these cells all of these yellow cells are a knight's move in chess away from this one in the middle so none of these yellow cells could be a one that's how the uh, knight's move restra uh, restraint works um, let's say this square was an eight that would mean that those two squares have to add up to eight and those two squares have to add up to eight and you can repeat a digit so they could be two fours like that um, now, what else have we got? We've got, oh yeah, the blue ones have to be even. That's pretty self-explanatory. So that's all there is to it. Do have a go yourselves. The way to play, of course, is to click the link under the video. And with that, I get to play. I've been looking forward to this. Let's get cracking. Um, and in the absence of anything better to do, I'm going to put two, four, six, and eight into the blue squares. Two, four, six, and eight. That's definitely true. I'm not sure whether it's going to equate to progress or not so the first the first thing I see here actually is instantly there's something very interesting about these cells uh, bordering box five of the grid uh, these are in fact this probably indicates this is going to be a coloring puzzle again because let's think about this square what can this square contain and the one thing it can't contain is an even digit because if we do try and put an even digit in there, let's think about that. Those two can't be the two because they're in the same row. That can't be a two. It's a knight's move away from this one. And neither could that be a two for the same reason. So you can see immediately this square is going to have to be an odd number. So I'm very tempted. I'll use O for orange. Uh, o for odd. Orange for odd. I'll use orange for odd because they both begin with O. I think I got that wrong last time as well. And that means I can put uh, orange in all of those too. Um, and of course I can do the same thing with those. They are exactly the same as this one. And we're going to get a very pretty pattern look. Now, what is this arrow? Um, this is an odd number plus an even number. Well, I know that that must equal an odd number. So we get another odd number there. This, okay, well that can't, oh, it could be a three, but it can't be a one. You can't, obviously if it's a one, we can't make those two squares add up to one. So that is very marginally restricted. And this one can't be a nine for the same reason. So, or a similar reason. Um, ah, okay, now let's look at this this arrow circle here. So this is an odd number, which means that those two cells must be an odd and an even number to add up to an odd number. Well, if these are an odd and an even number, that means that square must be even because there must be four even digits in row five and there's only one in that domino. Uh, now, so now we're going to have to th 
think harder. Uh, I've got three odds in this column. These funny blue ones. All of these blue ones are seen by this arrow sum. Ah, okay, now. Th well, it would be very interesting if this was blue. If this was blue, all of these four cells would have to be different even digits because all of them see each other. If you look at this cell, it sees that one by knight's move and it sees that one from its box. So uh, similarly this one sees both of those, this one sees that one and that one by knight's move. So we know those three are different. But if this one is also blue, this is seeing that one by Sudoku, that one in its box and that one by knight's move. So this would have to be the fourth even digit. Now, why does this have to be even? Uh, actually, it gets re if that's even, it really does get interesting as well because that cell, yeah, those two would both have to be odd because this cell could not be even because this cell also sees all four of those squares. Ah, now, come on, let's work out, why is this even? Perhaps a better way of thinking about it is what happens if it's odd? <laughs> why isn't it odd? So if it's... If it's odd, whatever it is, has to be in one of those two cells in the central box because this cell sees those two by knight's move and that one in its column. So it has to be the same as one of those two. Oh my giddy aunt, that is just, this is just what he does. This is what Fistemafel does. He just makes you almost gasp with, it's so simple but it's just it's beautiful again. Look, this, um, what's the best way of doing that? Let's imagine this is a nine, just for the sake of argument. We now know, in theory, if this is an odd number, that odd number has to be in one of those two cells. But the, the key is to realize if this is an odd number, these two cells must be an odd and an even number, and these two cells must be an odd and an even number, because they have to add to, to an odd number. But what Whatever, whichever one of these we make an odd number, where does it go in box five? It, do, it It's just stunning. It does not matter. Let's, let's try three. So let's imagine one of these has to be a three. It eliminates the same cells in the central box. If this is a three, it sees this one and this one in its row. It sees that by knight's move and it sees that by knight's move. So these exact four squares are ruled out and this three would have to make an appearance there. But if this is three, it rules out that one and that one in its column and those two by knight's move. So this has to appear here. Now, if the odd digit that we place in one of these two squares has to appear there, where does the odd digit in that one have to appear? We know there's an odd digit. It's going to have to appear there. So we've reached a contradiction. We know the odd digit, you know, let's make this one a five just for the sake of, we know there's a five in one of these two. We know there's a three in one of these two. It doesn't matter what the digit is. The point is that whatever the odd digit is you put there has to be, you know, those, you know, th this odd digit has to appear there in box five. This odd digit has to appear here in box five. And now there is nowhere for the nine to go. I suppose the other, you know, if we could put nine and zero in, we might be in, in, in Clover, but we can't. So, so what, what we learn is that this cell cannot, it cannot, so it is even, but I, I was just thinking about this. Doesn't that mean that has to be even as well? Because yeah, it does. It's, it's just symmetrical. In, in working out that this cell wasn't odd, 
I didn't use these cells at all. I just used the geometry of the central box. So I can do exactly the same with that. It's just symmetrically the same. You know, the odd digit in there would go in here. The odd digit in there would go in there. And whatever I had in here could not then go in the central box. So we are... Well, we're not cooking with gas, but we have discovered something. So this square has to be 2, 4, 6 or 8. I'm just thinking it can't be 2, can it? No, it can't be 2 because that's going to put a whole plethora of 1s in there and they will most certainly clash. So that is not 2. And that, ah, this is 4, 6. Sorry, that one is also even. That is 4, 6 or 8 as well. So 2 in the central box is now in one of these two squares because we've got off four even digits in column five. So if, if one of these is a two, neither of those is a two. Uh, now, hang on a minute. This, this cell, I already looked at this cell. This cell can't be an even digit. So that's got to be odd. And the reason it can't be even is just because it, it sees all four of these cells. And we know all four of these are different. So these are the four even digits. This is odd. And therefore, if it's adding up to an even number, that is also odd. So... So, what does that mean? Does that mean something obvious that I'm not spotting? So this could be, could be one and three. If this is four, this could be one and three. Why is that not possible? Oh, I, oh I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. The reason it's not possible, we've already thought about, I've already thought about this. If this is one and three, let's actually look at it because it's funny. If this is one and three, let's imagine it's this way round. The one is ruling itself out of those squares, so that has to be a one. If this is three, it's ruling itself out of those squares, so it has to be a three. So if you try and put different odd numbers into these two squares, you have to have, this square has to have two personalities at the same time. It's got to be a Schrodinger cell. It's got to have the property of being one and three at the same time. That's not possible. So this square, well, so what do we learn from that? We learn something we already knew, but I instantly then forgot, which is that these two squares, now they're odd. Well, now they're odd and they have to be the same number. So this has to be a six because if they have to be the same number, and they do because they have to make a reappearance here, the, obviously if we put, you know, two twos in here, they are not odd. Two fours are not odd. So this has to be two threes. This has to be a six. And they have to put a three there. And all of a sudden we have digits. Uh, have we got more digits? Not yet. We've got threes in one of those squares. Three's in one of these squares. Six is ruled out of all of those squares because this has now become a six. But now I'm thinking that this, this. So this can't be two odd digits because if it's two odd digits, we're going to have the same. Well, we'd need to use two threes and we can't repeat three in the center. And we can't repeat three in this box. So this is not two odd digits adding to an even digit. So it must be two even digits. And if it's two even digits adding to six, it must be two and four. I think that's good logic. Um, Okay. Uh, not sure what that means. That this being a three look has removed three from those squares. So can we limit this? 
if this can't if this can't be two no it could still be four one and that could be five I think I'm not sure I, there's probably some eliminations we can do here but I'm not spotting them so I'm gonna I'm gonna think about this one because I should be able to deduce similar things about these two squares shouldn't I these can't be this is an even number so these are either two odd numbers or two even numbers they can't be two odd numbers because this can't be a six so these are two even numbers and these are two even numbers this is all even apart from these two ah now Um, so if this is two even numbers, I'm just, I was just thinking about whether this could be a four, because if it's a four, can we put, can we repeat the two in there? Why couldn't we do that? Um... Maybe we can. I would place a two in that one. I'm not immediately seeing. I can see that, and that would be a two as well. I don't see what's wrong with that. So this could still, I think, be uh, this could be double two, or if this is eight, obviously everything changes. And there's oh, you could have two fours then, or you could have two and six. I don't know. Um, so we're going to have to think harder. Now these little short arrows are interesting because they're all they're doing is basically saying those two cells have the same parity, which isn't exactly revelatory, is it? Um, this being a six, I can rule six out of all of those cells. Do we learn anything more? from that. I don't know actually. I'm a bit stuck here for a few moments. This is four or eight. Maybe I can do more with the central row. Let's have a look at this. Um, so if this was a three, this would have to be a one and a two. Is there something wrong with that? Again, I'm, there might be, but I'm not seeing what it is. Hmm, goodness. Uh, six here. No, that's that's just not restrictive enough. Six has got to be in one of those two squares. So this square here has got to be two, four, or eight. Uh, keep coming back to this one can we oh I tell you how I can rule four out if that's four then I can't use oh yeah look I can't use three on that side I was gonna say can I have four I can't have four twos right so if this is four I can't put three in either of those so I'd have to put twos in, oh whoopsie I'd have to put twos in there now that's okay I think I think this survives but down here I've run out of options because three I can't put one three in there and I can't put two twos in there or I'll clash with these twos on the left hand side so I can actually do better and I can get eight in here now now that oh I suppose that does look that limits the central box look limits four out of this this becomes a six eight pair that becomes an now that's sorry there's loads of things that are interesting me now this being a two four pair and removing the ability of this square to be a four means this square can't be a five anymore because it's going to be we're adding up at least six and one here so we remove five here Yeah, hang on. Doesn't this have to be a one? 
because this can't be a 3. So if it's a 5, it gets paired with a 6, and that would have to be an 11. That's not possible. So this is 1. Which is good, but not... Well, yeah, no, that's very good. That means this can't be 3, because that would need a 1-2 pair. So this is not 3. 3 goes here. That means we know the parities. That's 3 is most certainly odd. So this is the last even digit. We know it's 2 or 4. We therefore know this is 5 or 7. Uh, apologies if you're seeing... Um, it's most likely to be knight's move things. I'm not spotting. I'm notoriously bad. At, oh, this square is even. And it can't be two or four, so this square has to has to be six because if it's eight, we'd have to put zero in this square. So this is six, this is two, this is four, this is two, this is four, this is two, and suddenly we have a little breakthrough here. This now adds up to seven, so that must make that a seven. That's a nine, so that makes this square an eight. This is a six. This is a five. This two fixes the two four in the middle. 9 sees those two squares by knight's move, so this is a 9. These two are 1 and 7, and oh, they're probably resolvable. I can't see how. 1, 7 here. Um, so, ah, now these two have to add up to 8. But this can't be a 2 or, or a 6, and they're both even, so these are two 4s, I think. Now, does that... Have I broken this? No, that does seem to work. It does seem to work. And what's more, it still leaves space for this to be a 4. I know I need one of these uh, 4 cells to be a 4. It must be this one. So these... Ah, now I know the 8. Now I know the 2. Where does 8 go in this box now? There's two 8s here pinching the box forcing that one and that one not to be. So that must be an 8, which means it's blue. We've got the four <laughs> evens in the box, so the others become odd. We've got four evens in that column. One of those squares must be a 6, because I need a fourth even digit in column 4. Incredible. It's just incredible. Um, Four. Where does 4 go in box 9? These 4s. This 4 here sees that square by knight's move. That cell there sees that by Sudoku. So the 4 goes in the corner. We'll put the 4 in the corner. That means there's a 4 there. There's a 4 up here. These 4s, that one can't be 4 because it's a knight's move away. Um, now... What next? We must be able to limit twos by the looks of things. Two, oh yeah, look, two. This two is seeing that one by knight's move. So two actually is locked in box seven into one position. And that places it, look, by Sudoku and knight's move combination into this square in box nine. So two is locked up into one of these two cells and one of those two cells. Eight can't go in those two squares in box um, box four. So eight, oh, nearly. Eight's in one of these two cells in box one. Ah, now look, that that looks suspicious, doesn't it? The fact both of these can still be eight. In fact, I should think about what this square can be because this square, of course, is not just limited by looking at the four, two, and nine, four. It's limited by everything that limits this cell as well. So actually, I'm going to look at this cell first. This cell uh, has got to be 5, 7, or 8. I think that's all it can be. It can't be 1, 2, 3, 4, or 9, and it can't be 6. So 5, 7, or 8. Ah, bobbins. No, look, that square is actually totally unrestricted. There's no additional restriction applying to this square on top of what that square already gave us. So this is 5, 7 or 8. 
this column look, what does it need? It needs five, six, and nine. So this is a five or a nine. Five, six, or nine at the top. This five is just not reaching far enough to do any any good work. Nine must be in one of those two squares by Sudoku. This cell, again, this is this cell and this cell. We can um, we can compare what's going on. So let's look at this position first. What can this be? It can be one, five, eight, or nine. Now let's just double check that. I can't see anything hitting that by knight's move. So this is one, five, eight, or nine, unless something hits this by knight's move, and it doesn't bother. So I've used I've used the arrows. I've thought about these arrows. So it must just be it must just be knight's move Sudoku, I think, that is going to unstick me here. Nine is quite limited in this box. This nine here sees all of those cells. So nine must go into one of those positions. Can't go here, that's a knight's move away, into one of those positions. Sixes have got to be down here. So six is a little bit limited. It can, can't go there because of this six. I can see that. It can't go here because of this six. Ah, and it couldn't go here because of these pair of sixes here, but that doesn't actually improve on that six's limitation. No, six has got to be in one of two positions in box nine. So what I'm actually managing to do here is pick off little bitty uh, constraints that aren't really taking me forward at all. Three, is that limited down there? No. Ah! So... Sorry about this, this is... I'm sure there is something straightforward here, I've just got to find it. Um, five, six, seven... Oh, no, I've already locked the nine up here. I was just noticing nine couldn't go in those positions, and that seemed like a revelation. Not a very useful revelation, because I'd already got it. Um, one, three, seven, nine into these cells. So this is one, seven, and nine at the bottom, because of the three here. Really? I can't do better than one, three, seven, or nine into those cells there. Ah, oh, dear, dear, dear. Let's have check this column as well. One, five, and seven. It's no good. It's just no good. Oh dear. Come on, Simon. Spot something. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where to look. I sort of feel like I must... Can I do more with this arrow? Is if I missed a knight's move? Ah. Ah, look. Um, where do uh, one, two, and three go in this column? That's a good thought. Um, look, this can't be one, two, or three. Neither of those can be one, two, or three. This square can't be a one, two, or a three because it sees the one there. And there's a two and a three looking at the cell. So actually, there is a one, two, three triple in column two, in because these are the only cells that one, two, and three can go into. Now that one can't be a two. Ah, now look. In that one, if my pencil marks co are correct, I have an eight. Yes, yes, that is a correct eight, because look, these eights are p pushing the eight into one of those cells and that can't be eight because of that. So this now cannot be an eight. So the eight must go there in the box in the circle. So that is eight. That's not eight anymore. That's not eight anymore. So that's not eight, which we could have got from there. Oh, wow, that felt like a big breakthrough, but it's not Has it really not done anything? 
No, I don't believe it. Um, goodness me. Okay, so maybe I've got to... Maybe I'll look at the rest of this column then. So if I've got a one, two, three, triple and a four, eight, nine, I need five, six and seven into those cells. So can anything get, that can't be six. Uh, <laughs> um, maybe eight up here, is that limited? Oh, that's tricky, but yes, look, eight can't go there by knight's move. Therefore, eight is in one of those cells. Now, where does eight now go in column seven of the grid? I mean, there's a couple of ways of looking at this, but once the eight's in one of those two squares, it's obviously not in one of those three squares. So it must be in one of these three squares and it can't be in either of those two. So this becomes an eight. Now that's nice because I've just noticed these eights over here are locking an eight into one of those two squares. Now this one can't be an eight. So we get the eight here. We Ah, now look, this is good. We get the eight in the corner. These eights mean the eight goes in the corner. We might, we might now have placed all the eights in the puzzle, I think, but we now, we now know the two goes here in box three. So the two, the two goes there in column two, that's not two anymore. Okay, well that's, that's okay, but it's not really what I was hoping for. Ah, but now six, where does six now? This is really hard. Where does six now go in box three? Knight's move looks, can't go there. This funny arrow thing has ruled it out of this square and it can't go there. So six goes here. Six goes here, therefore, and six is not there. And I should probably now do some more coloring just so that people don't get cross with me. It seems like I've been majoring on the even digits, looking at the digits I've just got to fill in there. Now this six is forcing that to be a six. So let's put that one in color. Si ah, we can keep going with sixes, six, six, and six here. An appearance from the devil, that must be a nine. Um, that must be a five now. That can't be a five, therefore, because of the knight's move. F ah, look, we get a nine at the top of the grid. Happy days, nine here. And this all felt like it was quite useful, actually. And now I've probably got to do bookkeeping to make sure that I don't miss anything. Nines can't go in those squares anymore. Let's colour those ones in orange. This one is blue. Have I done? No, I haven't. I've still not got these fours fixed in the top of the grid. That square, ah, look, this square can't be a five because of that five and it can't be a six. So that's a seven. That's a naked single. That means that's a five. That's a six. This should be a seven. The seven is fixing the seven and the one. This row still needs a five in it. We'll put that in. That rules a five out from this square, which rules a five out from the arrow square. This has got to be a one or a nine. All three of those turn orange. These are or Those are all orange. That's orange. That's orange. And this one is not orange. It's blue. Those are all orange. These are orange. We need five oranges in the box. We need five oranges in that row. We've got all our even digits in that column. We've got all our even digits in that column. Oh, six can just be placed by Sudoku there. That's useful. Let's do it. That means that must be orange. That must be orange because we know the four. Yeah, and that must be orange because we know the four, which is the last even digit, is locked into the uh, locked into those dominoes. So we're nearly there, I think. We've got to just tidy up. So we still need fives and sevens into those squares. 
well, there's a seven here, so that's a five. That's a seven. Seven doesn't go in those squares anymore. Where does the three go in box seven? It's got to go here. That fixes the one. Remove the one from there. That's got to be a one by Sudoku. That's not one anymore. One's got to live in. In fact, look along here. We've got one, seven, and three to place. So we can rule three out from that one and seven out from that one. I'm sure we can do better. Sorry, I'm just not. Oh, one can't go in that one because this is a one nine pair. Still can't quite see how to do that. These two have to be five and nine, and we've got a nine in the column though, so nine and five get placed. This square must be a three or a seven. That means that's not nine, so this is nine. Again, I still don't, I still haven't quite done it, have I? One, seven, nine over there, just looking at this column and what we need to put into it. Now, these three squares, if we look at this column, have to be, these three have to be three, four, and five. Four is not there. Five is not here because of this five. That one we know nothing about. I've almost pencil marked the whole grid now. Um, one, three, four, five. <laughs> so pre I presume I've missed something here, but I'm just going to, I'm going to have to look at these and check. So one can't go there. Actually, three can't go there. Uh, this one, this one it does see a four, but I'm not sure it sees much more than that. Is this one seeing anything else? One, three or five. I'm not sure. I can't see a restriction on this cell. This one is four or five. That's much better. Ah, good grief. Okay, well, that's very awkward, but there is there's a trick there. Look at these three squares. I'll make them purple so they stand out. Now, this is a bent triple. Look, three, four, and five. If these were all in the same column, we would know exactly what to do with these, but we can still do something here because whatever I pick for the central cell of this bent triple, so I'm, I sort of view it as that one, then that one, then that one. Whatever I put in this square, of the, the, the middle square, middle purple square, whether it's a three or a four, you get a five in one of these two squares. If this is a four, you get a five here. If this is a three, you get a five here. So any cell in the grid that sees these two cells can't be a five. And this one has five as an option. Well, it doesn't anymore. That's called a Y-wing, by the way, or I call them bent triples because that's how I think about scanning for them. Um, now, this is interesting because once this isn't five, where does five go in row three? Answer, there, that's the only cell it can go. doesn't do anything. I don't believe it. Oh, no, it does. It gives me a one, three pair here. So this can't be one or three. So now I've got... I don't believe it. It doesn't, it hasn't really done anything. Uh, okay, I'll turn it orange because it's I'll turn these back to white. And so I'm so sorry if I'm missing something really obvious here. It's very, very likely I am. I am only too aware of that, believe me. Um, so how do we finish this? Hmm, I've got uh, this. Right, here's something we can do, I think. 
let's look at whether this square can be a 1. Now if this square is a 1, something rather unpleasant happens down here, so far as this square is concerned, I think. Because if this square is a 1, you can see that's going to force via this square. This square will be a 3, but this square here will have to be a 7. No, actually, it's not this square. It's not. I missed it. I misscanned. For some reason I thought that forced this one to become a 7. It doesn't. It forces the opposite of that, but it has a different effect. In fact, it's simpler. It's simpler. Let's go back to here. If this is a 1, this is a 3, and this is a 1. And now I can't put 1 in this box. That's actually much nicer. That's much nicer than the incorrect method I thought I'd found. So these two ones now, this one rules a 1 out from that cell by Knight's move. This one rules a 1 out from that cell by Sudoku. All of which means this square can't be a 1, it's got to be a 5. Now that might be, that might be the thing that cracks the puzzle. Yeah, okay, so now we are suddenly... Yeah, now we are suddenly getting somewhere. Seven, one, three, seven. This seven sees that, and we go one, seven. Oh, fill in the last cell. Click check, and that is how to solve yet another just stunning, stunning Sudoku from Vistamafel. He always delivers these, these just, you know, these fabulous moments in my day where you know I get to solve these these puzzles that just you know when you discover this idea down here how this can't be odd it's it is like the what was the name the quote the simplicity of the solve path and yet just how mind-blowingly beautiful whoever wrote that well done that is exactly what it is it's not complicated once you start to think about whether this square cell can be odd it it's not too difficult to understand, you know, the logic and how this, these two cells impact and force themselves into here in the box. And then the symmetrical thing forcing the odd digit here into this cell. It's not too difficult, but when you see it, it it's just fantastic. Just fantastic. And that is why I love doing Fistimafel's puzzles. Um, so I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle through it. I, made a, I found it very difficult. Um, even after the middle part of the grid um, but I'm sure I've missed something so let me know in the comments I do read them thank you for watching back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic